Now you said they emit radio signals. Absolutely, yeah. About ten percent of the time, they they're active emitting radio signals. Uh, that's all of the implants that we know of, including the moving ones. Now uh, the moving the moving ones the moving ones are probably also made of a, of a conductive polymer, and they have these um, these like cilia on them, like a like a microorganism would have that enables them to uh, move under the skin. And um, some wow, people report that it hurts quite a bit when they move. Wow. Yeah, I can't imagine having something moving under my skin. Now, um, how many, how many have you had removed from yourself? Just the one. Just the one. Yeah. Have you had any others that you know of that uh, you know may still be there? Um, I have actual evidence that I have at least two more. I think that, I think I have three or four more. Um, what location? I have the, are those? Um, the ones above the ears, I've got those, and I, I remember having a brain implant put in when I was five, like I was telling you, and I think that's standard uh, procedure for um, uh, most abductees. Now, when you're doing scans for these devices, what kind of equipment are you using? Um, the uh, the standard um, scans that um, I use on people that want to find out if they're abductees or not are a stud finder scan to scan uh, areas of, um, of concern for um, implants uh, it's, they're good at detecting metallic objects into the skin and then we do a gauss meter scan uh, to detect weak magnetic fields and um, uh, alien equipment can sometimes magnetize uh, things including human tissue and um, if we get a gauss meter hit combined with a stud finder hit there's a, a high probability that's an implant the implants are almost always magnetic and um, uh, then I use uh, a Geiger counter to detect any traces of radiation once in a while or some left behind. And, um, and I use um, uh, an ultraviolet light to detect um, uh, alien dyes that are left behind on the body that stay up to a month or indelible dyes that are really hard to remove. Um, and there's various colors, uh, uh, orange, uh, green, uh, yellow, green, and blue. And... Um, uh, they're, they, they, they shine very strongly under um, short wave UV illumination, and um, that's a that's a dead giveaway. If, if if I see those, I know the person's been been taken within the last month. Now, um, if they want to have this removed, do you um, <clears throat> do you refer them to a to someone to have them removed? I've, I've just been telling. I don't have a, a doctor working with me at this point in time, um, but I just I just tell people to go to their GP and say they have a foreign object that's bothering them and try to get it removed. Um, insurance should cover it theoretically, um, but that's all I can do at the moment. But I'm trying to find um, a doctor who will come forward and help me with this research. Have you and, analyzed um, any recently? Uh, no, not recently. Um, uh, the last, the last uh, stuff I analyzed was actually uh, some crash debris from um, a UFO that crashed in uh, New Mexico um, uh, during the Roswell uh, time period in the U-47. What and, kind of uh, results uh, came from that? And, and I, I, I also analyzed... Um, uh, patient 17's implant to re reanalyze part of it um, about uh, like three years ago. Um, oh, um, there were mostly pieces of aluminum. Um, there was one piece of like ultra pure aluminum that appeared to have some sort of a different crystal structure than regular aluminum, and it was very hard and it would give off sparks when you when you put it on a grinding wheel, which is not what aluminum typically does. It was acting more like titanium or steel in that regard, but. Um, it was incredibly strong, and um, that also uh, was the case with um, patient 16's implant that came out of his wrist. It was a, a, a steel, um, a steel um, carbon nanotube metal matrix composite with a little bit of meteoric iron in it that was incredibly strong. And diamond tools would even cut it. That's unheard of. Diamond, diamond tools would cut just about anything. Wow, that's or should. Yeah, that's very fascinating. The other crash debris samples were um, uh, 
aluminum with some strange impurities in them uh, that, that would not uh, uh, be there uh, in earthly aluminum samples. A um, little uranium and thorium, rare earths, uh, uh, gallium and germanium, stuff like that. Now, do you think it's possible that our government or military industrial complex could be doing some of these implants? Um, yeah, I think it's possible. Um, I heard a rumor not too long ago, actually, that um, that the aliens had uh, had given them uh, a large quantity of, of their implants as part of some deal. So um, I hope that's not true, because that'll mean that uh, it'll be impossible to tell the difference between government implants and alien implants. But um, there's some evidence that the government and the aliens are working together anyway. But, um, but up to now, government implants have been distinguishable because they're usually like like you know little computer chips like, like a standard computer chip under the skin but um alien implants are very very small they're, they're much smaller they're like the one in my toe is like uh like one millimeter in diameter by like three and a half four millimeters long um and um um they're much uh the, the technology is much greater in them and much more advanced um and um I'm sorry, what was your question? Oh, no. Well, I was going to ask, I was going to go back to your contact experiences and ask if you remember any direct communication with any of these beings. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I mean... Are there um, any messages they told you? Like when they, they told me, when they told me what the, uh, what the brain implants were for and, um, uh, They'll sometimes answer questions like that, not always. And they're, they remind me of a high-tech foreign military, and a lot of the stuff they do is secret on their end, too. And uh, it's questions about what is your agenda, what, what do you plan to do at point A and point B at uh, this or that time, they won't answer questions like that, or hardly ever will. But they do sometimes ask, uh, answer technical questions. And... Um, Let's see, I remember them telling me what the what the implants are for, and I remember telling me a lot of a lot of abductees report this that that they're concerned about us screwing up the planet and possibly having a, a war that will be disastrous, and we need to change our ways and become part of the galactic community and messages like that. That's pretty standard. Has COVID nineteen broken economics? Are CEOs the new politicians? How will the travel industry survive the pandemic? And does the world still need banks? On Money Talks, The Economist's award-winning weekly podcast, we answer the big questions about the markets, the economy and business. Join me, Rachna Shanbhog, and our global network of correspondents and industry experts as we cut out the jargon and investigate what really makes the world go round. Like the single product on which the world economy depends and what happens when the factory making it grinds to a halt. Sustainable investing has been accused of greenwashing. We crunch the numbers to find out the impact. We dig into the hidden history of working from home and how it shaped labour rights. And we take to two wheels to investigate the secret economics of food delivery. That's Money Talks from The Economist. Start listening today wherever you get your podcasts. Have you, um, in your regressions uh, or any types of memories, do you uh, have memories of interacting with any reptilian beings or insectoid beings? Uh, I remember seeing some uh, ones that look like praying mantises that are like the bosses of the, the greys. You don't see them very often, but I remember seeing them on a couple of occasions. No, I hear that a and, lot, uh, that they're the bosses of the greys, that they're they're somehow right. uh, in control of them. Uh, you think the greys are, are just some type of uh, biological AI or something? Well, I think maybe some of them are, but in general, in general they are... Um, they are races that, uh, in most cases, used to be more like us, and they've had technology for so long that it's, it's that it's uh, changed them. Uh, they've often, at least the short grays, have altered themselves by genetic engineering and um, uh, overexposure to radiation and overuse of uh, transporters and, and technologies like that. Um, and now they're trying to um, fix themselves. Um, and um, the greys are an alliance of like seven similar species, and um, 
Um, they've all been changed by technology to one extent or another, but I think the short grays are in, in the worst shape, and that's that's part of the reason they're doing all these abductions. No, they, want, I, they want people like us in their society, and they want to uh, like fix themselves with human DNA and something like that. Are there certain are there certain bloodlines that are actually targeted more for these abductions and these implants? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a it's a lineage thing. Uh, they've uh, mapped out all the bloodlines of humanity long ago, apparently, and. Um, they know what characteristics they're interested in, and they, they handpick individuals to be part of their program based on their bloodlines and, and uh, genetic uh, makeup. I've, I've spoken with a lot of researchers that, that tend to believe that there's an ongoing um, hybridization program. Um, is that something that you have um, heard of or encountered or, you know, been uh, – been told anything yeah. about this? Yeah, they they um, they apparently genetically modify most of the people that, that are involved in the program, um, and they also have um, the people that they're call, that you're calling hybrids are have a lot more alien DNA and um, are were created in, in the program to try to create beings that that look like humans but have the, all the gray abilities and. Um, Apparently, they've had to put so much human DNA in, in, into them to make them look human that the gray abilities are quite diluted, but they're, they're a lot more psychic and, and um, intuitive um, than uh, normal humans, and they have faster reflexes, they're stronger, uh, that sort of thing. So do you um, think that these, these hybrids, are, they're actually walking amongst us? Yeah, I think so. I don't, know, I don't know how many, but I, I have reason to believe it's at least a few thousand. Now, from your experiences, um, these beings, are they? do they have the ability to, I guess, travel interdimensionally? Are they interdimensional beings, or are, are they, are they, have they uh, been physical, the ones that you've encountered? Well, I mean, they they have time travel, so in, in in that sense, they're interdimensional. They can travel between between alternate uh, realities. Um, in fact, they told me that uh, one one thing they did tell me is that is that they don't like to use time travel. It's more dangerous than space travel. You could get into an alternate reality, and it would be might be difficult to get out. Um, and um, uh, but no, I don't think they're from from an alternate universe. Uh, uh, per se, uh, they told me that they're um, that they're uh, from um, their races are in general from uh, planets within 100 light years of here. Uh, one of which one of which is Zeta Reticuli uh, four and um, uh, 61 Ursa Majoris three is another one. Uh, I find it interesting that you said they used to be a lot more like us, and you know all these things that they've done to themselves have have changed their appearance over time. Right. Um, do you think that they were very much like humanoid beings, possibly humans? Uh, you know, um, and they're they're us in the future. I've heard some of them are, yeah. Um, uh, Area 51 uh, supposedly made contact with a group of greys that, that were humans from the future, from like a million years from now. And um, typically these, these uh, beings start looking like greys when they've had technology for well in excess of 100,000 uh, years, usually like on the order of a million years. That's my understanding anyway. Now, um, what are your thoughts on our secret space program? Do you think that uh, we have operations on the moon, on the Mars? Um, yeah. Um, I think we've had a secret space program for a long time. Um, according to my research, um, uh, when um, the Air Force announced they were getting out of the space business back in 1957, I believe it was, and they formed NASA, uh, that was for show. I mean, they, they never did get out of the space business. They've had a secret space program ever since then. Um, uh, NASA has always been a dog and pony show to um, uh, occupy the public and uh, to get all the space scientists under one roof where they can be controlled and what they say can be controlled. And um, um, 
the Air Force has been uh, trying to advance in, um, in uh, space for ever since then, and they've, they've had anti-gravity uh, powered um, uh, craft um, that are like, you know, primitive versions or less sophisticated versions of what the aliens have uh, since uh, the late 60s, from what I understand. How far ahead do you think our military-industrial complex is as far as technology? I mean, I've heard up to 50 years. Yeah, in general, it's about that. In certain areas, are more like 100 years ahead. But, um, yeah, about 50 years in general. And do you think that we will ever see any of this uh, possible free energy technology, um, you know, anti-gravity? Like that? Um, I think we're probably going to see the anti-gravity before we see the free energy. Um, I think in order to see the free energy, we're going to have to um, uh, change how we how we govern this planet and and you know take the power out of the hands of this this power elite that controls people that own all the, all the oil companies and the pharmaceutical companies and and um, the the big industries in general. Um, the reason we the reason we haven't gotten off oil is, is not because there aren't better ways of generating power, but because uh, uh, oil uh, and so-called fossil fuels are as good as it gets as far as the profit margin for the power elite. Um, you need to burn megatons of the stuff to generate any great amount of power, and it's a substance that occurs all over the planet. We're not running out. That's a myth that we're running out. Um, it's generated from uh, inorganic reactions deep within the earth. It has nothing to do with fossils. Um, and uh, specific, specifically at the crust, uh, out or near the crust mantle boundary. That's why in any, any place there's faulting, uh, oil comes to the surface. Um, it's actually the liquid that the crustal plates float on. But um, in any event, we're not running out, and you have to burn megatons of the stuff, and you can charge $100 a barrel for it. And, it's difficult to see any other way of generating power um, uh, have a higher profit margin than that. Um, and uh, they also control people that way. You need, you need their oil in order to generate power. If we had free energy, then you could have a little box that would power your house and everybody would be independent. Um, yeah, even now that... when they have... Go ahead. Go ahead. Even when they have things like nuclear power, for example, uh, they want to make huge mega power plants out of it that uh, everybody has to depend on rather than smaller units that would be safer. Um, you know, that brings, they me, it all centralized. that brings me to my next point of, I think that's, you know, the reason why so many of us believe that, or want to believe that these elites are in control from a, an off planet or a malevolent source or even some kind of demonic source. They don't want to believe that humans just come up with this on their own and then they want to enslave humanity just for the sake of power, just for the sake of money. But, you know, I'm still on the fence. Is it just humanity enslaving itself or is there something out there that's, you know, controlling them, pulling their strings? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a little of both. I think that the um, the power elite are extremely corrupt, uh, morally bankrupt individuals, and I think they probably are being influenced by uh, aliens of some stripe, probably reptilians, like they say. Um, and um, one reason one reason I think that the, that there's some alien influence involved is because um, there seems to be a very long term, uh, multi century plan to um, to do all this enslaving of humanity and. Um, I just don't believe that, that, that humans are capable of uh, planning much beyond a human lifetime. It's, it, it's just, it would be highly um, uncharacteristic anyway for uh, individuals that corrupt to uh, give two hoots about what happens after they die. So um, aliens have a much longer lifespan, so that's, um, that's why I think that there probably is some alien, uh, alien influence involved with us. But I don't think it's really the greys. I think if, if it is... Um, uh, aliens are probably as the reptilians. Yeah, I mean, there's so many aspects of our society that is going, I believe, in the wrong direction. I mean, we're seeing enhancements in technology, but what are we using it for? I mean, most of the nation is staring at their, their smartphones and not producing anything, not um, giving back to society. And, you know, it's all about themselves and their devices and just 
the nonsense that the media is spewing out there, um, the agendas seem to get um, worse every year, and people are just buying into it and going along with it, and it doesn't seem to be changing in any way. There's a few of us that are waking up to this and, and um, becoming aware and spreading the word, but it doesn't seem to be enough to be making a change that in the direction we need to go. Yeah, I think we're we're making some progress, but I hope it's just not I hope it's not too little too late. I mean, the Grays really do want us to wake up and and um, do um, do things better and um, improve things. There's really no reason technologically why things can't be getting better and better on this planet uh, instead of worse and worse. Um, the only reason they're getting worse and worse, in my opinion, is because um, uh, the power elite want more and more and more money out of us and more and more and more control and and. When you disempower people and um, and uh, make and you know take all their money away and everything, then then um, you know things are definitely going to get worse and worse. Um, the, the the type of system that they that they have um, set up and that they that they want to uh, promulgate is unsustainable, and the, the Greys are concerned about that too. Um, and um, all the technology we we do have, we use for. Um, or at least governments use for better ways of killing each other and we need to we need to you know do something constructive as a race rather than um, always destructive I mean there's no reason why um, we ought to behave with every new technology like the kid that's found his father's gun I mean it's, it's you know we need to we need to be more responsible than that now you said that it's the grays that they they want to help us I hear so many contradictions stories about the greys um yeah they're very misunderstood um i think some of them actually are um malevolent type robotic entities um that may be under control of reptilian races but i hear some of yeah, them are uh, here to help us um so you've experienced primarily the ones that are here to uh, help or so they say well, yeah, they're not they're not warm and fuzzy, but and they're they're mainly here to help themselves to our resources and such. But they, they are here secondarily to um, to help the planet and to help us become a more um, a more sane and responsible race, definitely. But I, I disagree with people who say that they're total scum sucking evil. I mean, I just I just don't haven't really experienced that. Do you think that there was an agreement? with Eisenhower and these ETs for technology in, in exchange for human abductions? Yeah, I think there was. Um, I don't have any, any proof of that, but it, it certainly makes sense. I mean, um, they, had a, they had a big, um, uh, big to-do with UFOs over the White House uh, in 1952, and um, they were trying to shoot, and shoot them down uh, prior to that big time, and... Um, uh, it sort of makes sense that, that somebody would have requested a meeting, and, um, and Eisenhower was actually missing uh, during a couple of time periods when people said they had, they had a meeting with the Greys at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Um, it said that Kennedy met with them too, and um, uh, I, I was kind of mad that they about them selling us out at first, but then I figured, well, what else? What else really could they do? That if, if they had not agreed to it, the Greys would have just done it anyway, and um, and uh, they wouldn't have gotten anything out of it. They wanted to get technology out of it, at least. So uh, what are your thoughts on what's happening now with disclosure? Um, there's, I'd like to say, interesting things happening. I don't know um, what direction they're trying to come with this, um, with the, um, the Navy sightings and all the mainstream media talking about UFOs and now this whole craze with Storm Area 51. It just seems mm. like it's all happening at one time, um, yeah. more prevalent now. Do you think that there's some sort of agenda there? Yeah, I think there always has there always has been um, two conflicting agendas in government about disclosure. Um, the intelligence agencies want to keep the uh, the alien presence under wraps forever, and a lot of other government agencies want to disclose, or at least disclose in a controlled manner after a certain amount of time. And um, I think the Navy now believes that that time has come, and that we should we should be seriously preparing the public for uh, for disclosure. And um, 
uh, they have a lot of pull, and I think that uh, that uh, they and maybe some other government agencies have um, instituted a a, uh, a push for this and said, told the intelligence community, community that enough is enough, we're going to do this. Um, but yeah, several people have told me that that there's uh, more of a push for disclosure right now than than ever before, and it was really kind of abrupt too because uh, just like two years ago, there was, we were in the midst of another crackdown on uh, talking about UFOs. So. It goes in cycles, but this 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 cycle appears to be uh, appears to be different, according to what I've heard, in that um, that we may actually get uh, disclosure at the end of it this time. Do you think that we will see it within uh, I don't know, say the next five years? Yeah, there's a good chance. I'm not going to say it for sure, but I think there's maybe a fifty fifty chance we'll see disclosure within five years. Now, what are your thoughts on um, what's happening with Trump? Do you, th you know, I, I don't really follow politics. I never trusted the presidents. Uh, I always believe there are puppets. But, you know, uh, like I tell people, um, I do see something with Trump that I haven't seen before. I just don't know if there's an, another agenda behind that, you know, a, a hidden agenda behind the agenda. Um, it's so hard to tell with, uh, with everything that's happened. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think he's on our side and he's trying to um, get the ball rolling in the right direction for us? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump, um, Trump, in, in part, uh, started this latest push towards disclosure. I know his, um, I believe it was his father, uh, was uh, heavily involved in um, in uh, UFO um, uh, research from within the government, and uh, he knows all about uh, all about this stuff and. Um, um, I think that um, he's not a part of the reason that people are so against him is that in the media is because he's he's not a puppet, or at least he's not nearly as much of a puppet as the last few presidents we've had, and that worries him uh, a lot. And if these people in, in the so-called deep state are very worried about him because he's, um, from their point of view, loose cannon, and he just and he wants to put things back the way they were. So, do you see um, do you see a victory for him? Do you think we're still going to keep going in that same direction? Uh, as far as disclosure, or um, I, as far as uh, the election, do you think that he has a chance oh, uh, that that uh, we're going to keep moving in that direction? Do I think he's going to get reelected? You mean, or yeah? Uh, yes, I believe he will get reelected. I think that people he, that. Um, the deep state people are not going to be able to counter the groundswell of um, positive uh, public opinion about uh, Trump improving the economy and uh, trying to stop this agenda of giving all uh, power to illegal aliens and and um, and all that sort of thing that they've been doing. That's crazy stuff. Now, as far as all these other agendas, um, these you know these hidden agendas to you know you see it. I'm trying to dumb us down through the media. Um, very suspect of 5G. I don't believe that it's going to be just for faster download speeds. I believe that there's no. some, some malevolent purposes behind that. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, I totally agree. I mean, I've, I've seen indications from what I've been, uh, from, from my research, that 5G um, can be weaponized and can be used to spy on people and um, uh, can... Um, uh, be used to do mind control and uh, several other, other things, and that's the reason government's pushing for it so hard. It's not it's not to download PDF files faster than we have than we can do now. Um, everybody, including Trump and government, wants uh, 5G. They're just salivating for it, and um, to the point where they're um, willing to launch like a trillion dollars worth of uh, new satellites in order to support it, um, and. Um, this is in spite of the fact that <clears throat> it's known for sure that um, radiation in that wave band is is, uh, is terrible for you, and uh, they're planning on bathing the planet in low levels of um, of um, uh, high gigahertz, terahertz uh, radiation, and um, nobody knows what effect that'll have. Um, I can't be good. Definitely. Now, as far as our secret space program. Um, a lot of the UFOs that we see, um, do you believe that those are actual off-planet crafts, or do you think that's a lot of our military? 
I think most of them are alien. My my personal opinion is that most of them are are alien, but uh, maybe a third of them are um, are ours. Um, the percentage of, of ones that are ours is probably going to continue to increase. It's definitely increased since the 1960s and 70s. Um, they uh, reportedly perfected um, the anti-gravity uh, craft to the point where it was you know, pretty safe and could carry large loads and such uh, around, the nine, around the mid-90s. So they have a, now a fleet of um, anti-gravity-powered uh, spacecraft. And um, uh, a, a congressman from Alaska during that um, that uh, um, hearing on disclosure that they that, that they that Steve uh, Bassett held in Washington D.C. actually admitted that during the, the proceedings. Now, as far as the the alien species, the Greys, for instance, they they have an agreement that they can't intervene with anything in our planet is that right well i think there's a there's like an alien un uh, where all the powerful uh, uh, alien species um, uh, interact and um, i think they've got a got a rule that um, they cannot uh, you know interfere in primitive planets unless they have local government approval and and um, the Greys now have local government approval to do certain things, but I don't think they can do anything they want down here. Uh, even still, I think they're they're also they're subject to the will of other powerful alien species. <clears throat> now, have you seen an increase in implants uh, since you first started uh, researching this? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I, I know that uh, that most people that come to see me have implants because that's a that's a totally um, uh, very uh, highly enriched, pre-selected uh, sample of people uh, towards um, you know, having implants or abduction activity. Um, but as far as uh, an increase in, in abduction and um, the uh, prevalence of implants in the general population, uh, I think so. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to uh, how to prove that. Um, we'd have to. Um, do a, a study involving a large number of people to prove that. Certainly, the number of UFO sightings has gone up, and um, most likely, uh, uh, most uh, most of those UFO sightings are uh, abduction related. I mean, and, uh, I have reason to believe they fly thousands of sorties a day for supporting the abduction program. Now, do you think that it's possible that we will have disclosure from them, and and not it won't come from us? Um, yeah, it's possible. Um, it's quite possible. I know that I've been saying that for years that that the aliens are going to disclose themselves eventually if we don't, and it, it's possible if the aliens gave them an ultimatum that they, they've got to disclose, or or we or we will, and that would certainly um, get the ball rolling. I don't I don't know that for a fact, but it's possible. Very interesting. Now, Steve, I want to thank you again so much for coming on tonight. And uh, could you give everybody your websites before you head out? Um, yeah, sure. It's um, it's www.alienevidenceinc.webs.com. And um, uh, it, it needs a little work at present, but um, it's got uh, a couple of papers on it. Um, uh, on uh, my implant and uh, patient 16's implant that I think uh, people that are scientifically minded would find very interesting. Um, both of them were um, sophisticated nanotechnological devices with uh, large amounts of carbon nanotubes um, in the interior. And um, I urge everybody to take a look at those. And there's, there's ample evidence um, from my analyses that uh, both the, um, uh, those pieces were from off planet. Very good. And I want to thank you so much again for coming on tonight, Steve, and you have an excellent rest of your night. Okay, you too. Nice, nice. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Good night. Good night. You've always been the early bird and a night owl. And as your business has grown, you understand the value of guidance from those you can trust. 
At Ig Bailey, we're in business because you are in business.